You're watching CES Live, powered by Ustream.tv, the most powerful way to stream live video. And by Utech, makers of the TriCaster family of broadcast and streaming systems. And now, CES Live. <laughs> hey guys, welcome back to CES Live coverage here at CES 2015. I'm David Foster. <laughs> and I'm Kelly Lewis. We are having a great time seeing all kinds of gadgets. We just saw the Eco Rico scooters, and we are now here with Manrique uh, from Blossom. And you guys have some interesting stuff to show us. Yes. Um, Smart watering system mm -hmm. controller. controller. And yes. I'm actually very excited about this because as a because you care about your owner. lawn? Yes, I used to have a sprinkler system and it's so hard to set it up because you got to go back and forth with these switches and set the timer and then set the day on every single day. And I imagine this is probably just... Yes. Yeah, so what we've done is take the pain out of the sprinkler system but do it a, even a little bit better. Oh. Today, the sprinkler controllers are essentially timers. Mm -hmm. And the timers go on certain days of the week at a certain times. And in reality, water consumption from the plants is not a function of time, it's right. a function of weather. So we've changed the equation and said, okay, we want to give the 40 million people that have irrigation controllers an option to upgrade. So we built a system that actually can retrofit the existing systems. You can go out, take the old controller, that is a pain in the neck to manage. That waters your lawn in the rain. In the rain, yes. <laughs> and you can just basically keep in the same wires, keep in the same sprinklers, valves, you don't touch anything. Just plug in this thing into the wall, plug your, ex your existing wires, and once you put the wires in there, Okay. You snap the top portion on it, you plug it into the wall, and then you take it, this little bridge that we have, it's a power line bridge, and you hook it up close to your router into an electrical outlet and so connect it with a, with an ethernet cable to your router. At that point, okay. this device is connected to the internet. You don't okay. have to fool around with you don't your Wi-Fi. You connect anything, you don't have to do anything. Just, you're connected. Once you're connected, you can, you can register the device back into our cloud service. And what we do there is, with your location, we gather all the weather data around you from thousands of weather stations around the US, and with that, we calculate what is the actual water demand for your plant. And every day, we adjust your schedule to actually meet the, the demand of water and also look at the forecast. Well, so, and but, like a lot of times you have specific kinds of grass. Mm -hmm. Like I might have crabgrass, somebody yeah. else might have uh, Kentucky yeah. bluegrass. Do you? So when you wow, you know kinds of grasses. I do. That's impressive. When <laughs> you register the device, you can go on a zone by, on a valve per valve basis or zone per zone basis and actually give us more information. What type of sprinklers you have, what type of crops do you have, oh, whether wow. or not they're, they're exposed to rain. There's some areas in your grass that may, maybe a flower bed has an onion roof that basically doesn't let the rainfall, so we need to know that so that so we can, can adjust. You can individually control the zones. Like Every I have zone. zones with the bushes and the flowers. Exactly, so each zone will have its own controller. The other thing, it's, its own definition. So you can go in with your app, name the zone, take a picture of it, so then when you look at your, at your phone and you want to turn on anything, you're not thinking zone eight or zone seven, you know, front lawn or yeah. flowers in the back mm -hmm. and there's a nice picture right next to it. And also, we let you modulate. We, we have this, we've been building this great agroecological agri model to make this happen, but we may be off. Maybe there's a part of your garden that has a little bit more sunlight than normal. Mm -hmm. So we let you modulate and say, look, actually this, this zone is a little bit too dry. I want a little bit more water, so add 10% more water. Or maybe this zone, I don't care too much about it. I want to save the water. Mm -hmm. So I say, hey, this one, I'll keep it at 70%. I'm going to save that water. And you can do that on a zone for zone basis. And by doing that, you're telling our system, oh, this is your off here, there. But at the end of the day, consumption is always proportional to the to the weather. So we move with the weather, your feedback, and we create a really, really smart system that can save you a lot of water. And That's awesome. Yeah. Well, and so does it actually know, so so if there's a, a storm rolling in, yes. and my right. sprinkler system is set to go off, does it know that it yes. precipitation is? So what we do is, we look at what happened over the last 24 hours to see how much we need to put back in there. But we also look at the forecast for the next 72 hours. So we look at the likelihood of rain. If it's likely to rain, we're not going to turn on the sprinklers. We're going to wait for the rain. This is, this is very important because when you look at the soil, it only can hold a certain amount of water. Mm -hmm. right. so, if, so people say, oh, I hate my sprinklers running when it's raining. Yes. But it's also as bad if you turn them on two hours before it rains. Right. Yeah. Because you feel that soil profile. So what you want to do is keep the soil at a low moisture level so that your plants don't suffer. 
So there's a lot of open pore space in there so that when there is a rainfall event, you can absorb all that water. So are there any sensors in the ground no. or is it it's just intelligent it, based on looking at the weather forecast and your zone input? Your, uh, your zone input and the feedback that we get from our users. That is, it sounds like one of the smartest uh, you know, sprinkler systems, sprinkler systems, or smart sprinkler systems, that's kind of hard to say, <laughs> uh, are, are becoming really popular, yes. the, the automation process uh, for our homes. But I haven't heard anything as quite as specific as this, so I'm really looking forward to trying it out. Now, um, in terms of the app itself, uh, is it iOS, Android, what? It's iOS and Android, and we also have a web interface that you can use if you want to add and go to your computer and actually do something more fancy, you can actually do it with a, with a, with a keypad in front of you. Okay. Um, I can't stress how important this is. Today, in the US, more than half the water consuming a household is in the garden. So if we really have a, want to have an impact in places like, like Dallas, where there's, there's a drought, this is the place to go. This is what's going to make people save water, help the environment, and also save a lot of money. I yeah. Mean, well, and yet plus the, the frustration you save people from having to go. Right. Convenience. Like if I had, you know, at some time that I wanted to go, because it was raining, to go out and shut up, you got to go outside, you got to manually change it and shut it off or turn it on. It's just, it's a frustrating it's experience. A frustrating. Yeah. yeah, there's also the, the notion that, that we have now real-time control of our device. We're always connected to this device. Mm -hmm. So if for whatever reason you say, hey, I, I want to, you know, turn, I just put some fertilizer yeah, in I got I got a friend walking through the yard I, I want to get away. We say, or, we have the, the kids want to play in the, <laughs> yeah. in the garden. Let's, let's yeah. the that's the, the now, will it show us how much uh, you know, water conservation yes. is going on? It'll display it all will of tell that? You, it, yeah, it will tell you essentially how much you're saving, right? Okay. So, so charts, right? like over time, like, yeah. you know. It will tell you, yeah, what you're saving. And, and Can you connect it to your um, to your utility service so it knows how much Not you're yet. charging? Not yet, we, okay. We, we, future we, future update. Look to that, yes. Now, one, I have a suggestion. Connect it to Spotify so that it waters to the beat of music. We're working on that too. Awesome. <laughs> no, we have a patent on it. Nice. Because nice. <laughs> I could be sprinkling the lawn. And, <laughs> yeah, yeah. and what about <laughs> restrictions? Uh, you know, yeah, uh, so community what we do, restrictions. So what we do is we, we also provide, we provide the moment you install the device, we, we program it with a schedule, a, a default schedule that goes Monday, through Thursday, Sunday through okay. Thursday, with the notion that you want your garden to be dry over the weekend. But you can change anything. We give okay. you a really nice interface that says, actually I want Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Or you can go to a calendar and say, I want to block this and this and these days because my district doesn't allow me to block on those, to, to every of those days. So it makes it very easy. It's, instead of like playing around with these dials and buttons, <laughs> and stuff, you have a graphical interface, a calendar that says, this day, this day, this day. And I want them to start at a certain time. And we can do intelligent things. You can have them start at a given time of day, but we recommend that you start your sprinklers one hour after sunset every day. Well, and that's when it what cools somebody down. told me. Right. Yeah, somebody told me that it's better early, early a.m. Uh, like in the evening, early. They're probably like two o'clock in the morning is what I was processes. told was the best time. But that's it. So there's there's two two camps in this, right? If you want to save water, the best time is when it cools down because your sprays are going to come out and, and the evaporation of the sprays will be lower. Mm -hmm. So we think that you know the sprinkler systems sometimes are noisy. <laughs> so we don't want them at 2 a.m. in the morning. Right. So, so what, we, what we default in there is one hour after sunset. It cools down, it's not okay. too late. Mm -hmm. you can, but if you want to put him like at 2 in the morning or you want to put him at sunrise or before sunrise, we let you do that because we calculate sunrise and sunset every day. As part of those models that we run out there, we know when the sun comes up and when the sun goes down, solar radiation is what drives a lot of the demand. So it's easy for us to say, okay, we can do it whenever you want. Fantastic. That's awesome. One more question from the chat room. Distant Soil wanted to know uh, if it can tell what kind of sprinkler he has, like a soaker, a soaker hose rotating sprinkler head. Yes. So we, so that's part of the inputs that you can provide for okay. each zone. You can say if you have sprays, uh, rotors, drippers, bubblers, because that is part of the input that we need. We need. Okay. We, we we have. That's part a of the feedback process. Exactly. Exactly, okay. we can get there. Um, and how much are we looking at? It, this one is 199. Oh we wow! A, we have a promo right now through the end of That's the month cheap. at 149, and it is. It, we we designed the box thinking that it would work in 95 percent of the homes in the U.S. This thing can run indoors or outdoors. In many California, for example, has a lot of sprinkler right. components outdoors. Yep. So this one will run there or indoors if you have it in the garage. Okay. And the other thing that we found when we when we started this project is that connectivity was critical. Uh, Wi-Fi doesn't always work when you have the controller attached to a wall outside or in the garage behind a water heater. So we put in power line. So people, it's just this, but power line is simply you're sending the data instead of over the air, you yeah. send it over your, your wire, electrical mm -hmm. wiring. We also left the Wi-Fi in there. So there's two ways to communicate. You can just use power line the way we give it, 
But if you have Wi-Fi and you are sure that, that that's the way you want to go, we'll let you do that too. Fantastic. Awesome. And if we haven't whet your appetite enough, you guys can win one of these because we're giving away one. Yep. Two of them. Two of them. Yeah, oh, I'm okay. sorry. This, these guys know what's going on. I don't know what's going on. Why don't you tell them how? Yeah, we are giving away <laughs> two of these. You can go to geekbeat.tv forward slash giveaways uh, and look for the Blossom giveaway. All right, cool. Thank okay. you hey, thank so you. much. Great, we great appreciate to be here. it. Yep, I'm excited. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait. I, I live in an apartment now, so, you know, but. Don't worry. We'll right, go. right. You're going to have to yeah. we'll go get along. go to the along. apartment owner and get him to buy one. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> All right, thank you guys so much for hanging out with us and asking questions and being active in the chat room. Geekbeat.tv slash CES Live for the rest of the day's coverage and everything you've missed the whole week before. He's David. I'm Callie. Bye. <laughs>